With this review we will cover uh, basically all Antex Symphony AAOs because we did 360 and today we're going to talk about Antex Symphony 240 addressable RGB all-in-one liquid system that has a quite interesting pump and the addressable RGB is quite outstanding as we could see on the Symphony 360 so basically we're just losing one fan, one 120 millimeter fan and the size of the radiator as well goes from 360 to 240. So today we're going to check out that, uh, going to go with thermals and uh, compare it with 360 to see the difference because last time we did 360 with uh, uh, AMD Ryzen 550-600G uh, and we're going to do that today as well just to see the difference in temperatures. So basically guys, without further ado, let's go. But before we go into thermals and all the other necessary information that you need to know, we need to check out the box content and what I love about Symphony AAOs. First of all, the fans are already pre-attached, pre-installed on the radiator and their position is basically designed to place the radiator on top of your chassis. In other words, you could place it on front, but you do need to remove the fans, unscrew them and place them on other side of the radiator. It all depends on you and your configuration inside your build, so I won't go into that, but it's quite easier uh, to mount the radiator like this, already pre-installed fans, you don't have to worry about the cable direction and blah 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 blah. Okay, but here we go. As on Symphony 360, you have the same thing and in Symphony 240, so universal backplate, which uh, is basically designed for your AMD socket and for your Intel socket, except for 2011, 2066 Intel socket for extreme processors. Uh, and that way you actually just use the same backplate if you desire to change platforms or whatever you desire to do. This way it gives you uh, an option to easily install everything on each system. Now some main specifications, we have addressable RGB lighting PWM fans as well as the chromatic addressable RGB lighting pop head. We have EPDM plus IIP high density tubing with copper base for your cold plate. Uh, and in sync with motherboard you could adjust the RGB lights on both uh, fans and the pump giving you quite an outstanding RGB effects, static color, whatever you wish. It all depends on the motherboard uh, software and what kind of effects does it support. So of course you could go with uh, Asus Aura Sync, MSI Mystic Lights, uh, ASRock Polychrome RGB, Gigabyte RGB Fusion and so on and so on, right? Uh, you get thermal paste, you get all the necessary backplate, standoff screws, uh, locking nuts and everything that you need to place this inside the build. Now since we already covered everything there is to know about uh, Antex Symphony AIO with the 360 video which you could check right here, uh, let's dive in into thermals and uh, benchmarks with Symphony 240. Now I didn't change the fan configuration on the AAO, I just placed it on top of the chassis. This is Antex NX250 case which comes only with 120 non-RGB fan pre-installed at the back, which is quite alright, I would say quite alright. It would be cool to have two additional fans on the front, but I wanted to leave it with standard configuration, so it makes it a bit interesting I would say. Uh, Symphony 360 on AMD Ryzen uh, 550-600G had 65 or 64 Celsius degrees on full load in AIDA 64 Extreme Benchmark. Uh, now with the AMD Ryzen 550-600G and Symphony 240 in the same benchmark, we got uh, 69 Celsius degrees. I do have to mention that I don't have any fans on front, so there is basically no intake. The fans on the radiator are taking air that comes along inside, let's put it that way. Uh, if you place uh, two additional fans like 120 or 140 on front of the case, you will get nice cold air inside and the fans 
for the radiator will just suck it in through the radiator giving it nice uh, cooling for the liquid inside the loop i would say that this configuration with two fans on front it will get uh, quite lower temperature with this configuration but with the symphony 360 md ryzen 5 5600g went up to 57 celsius degrees and when we take this case and this AI also 240 into configuration with AMD Ryzen 5 5600G without the front intake fans, we get 69 Celsius degrees. Now, I wouldn't say that's a shocker because we don't have any intake fans. So all the air that is coming through the radiator is basically coming along inside on the front of the case. And by that, it makes sense to have 69 celsius degrees but if you decide to place two 120 or two 140 fans on front you will lower the temperature about five celsius degrees so i would say 63 to 65 celsius degrees on amd ryzen 5 5600g with two additional fans as intake and that is seven celsius degrees higher than 360 radiator it would be quite interesting to check out if the symphony 360 on top if i had such a case that can support 360 on top without front intake fans what would be the temperature i would say it would be somewhere around 62 to 63 celsius degrees so seven celsius difference with 360 to 240 and i think that is quite all right for 120 distance on the radiator and an additional fan you get seven celsius lower and i would say quite nice as you can see, standard pump design, it's really nice, really cool. I really love these uh, side lines and the mirror effect that the pump has. Uh, quite nice tubing without any additional bumps or they're just straight flat and they look quite uh, cool inside the case. And of course, the RGB on the fans is remarkable, going along nicely with the pump top. So all in all, I would say quite nice uh, AAO liquid cooling system which you can check out the prices and every detail in the link below if you're interested in of course and finally don't forget to click the sub button like button for the video notification bell for future content so you get notified and that will be all so thank you very much for watching today's video hopefully i will see you soon in a new one and bye bye